please consider supporting my work on Patreon from only one dollar. Thank you. Hello and welcome to All Top Fives. Wales has a long and varied history, originally inhabited by the Celtic Britons before invasions by Romans and Anglo-Saxons, and this shows through its unique and fascinating folklore and mythology, five of which I'll be diving into in this video. Number 5. In the Mabinogion, a collection of mythological stories that date back to the 11th century in Wales, one branch of the story focuses on Pryderi, the king of Dyved. Pryderi, his wife Sigva, his mother Rhiannon, and her husband Manawadan all return from battle to a misty and unusually desolate Dyved. They decide to live as hunters, and one day they chase a white boar through the hills, and it leads them to a mysterious castle. Frederi can't resist entering against his mother's advice, and when he doesn't return, she investigates, finding that her son has been rendered speechless and is clinging to a bowl. She falls under the same enchantment, and the castle vanishes. The distraught Sigva and Manawadan grieve their losses and return to the kingdom of Doved, where they become farmers, sowing three fields of wheat. Before harvest, an entire field is destroyed mysteriously overnight. The next night, a second field goes too. Alarmed, Manawadan holds a watch over the final field, and that next night discovers a race of mice in the act of destroying it. He captures the mouse leader and prepares to hang it for its crimes. A bishop hears of these plans and hurriedly offers Manawadan gifts to spare the mouse's life, gifts that Manawadan refuses. Instead, he desperately replies that he will only spare the mouse if the magical spell that renders Doved so misty and barren is lifted, and if Pryderi and Rhiannon are returned. To his surprise, the bishop agrees. The mouse, as it turns out, is the bishop's wife, and he has been waging a war of magic against the land of Doved. The reason for this is that Pryderi's father had humiliated the bishop's friend some time ago, and the bishop chose this mystical kind of revenge. But Pryderi and Rhiannon were returned, and the enchantment was broken, the mouse wife was spared, and our hero Pryderi went on to rule David and to have more adventures documented in the Mabinogion. Number 4. One traditional ancient Welsh folkloric creature is the Adar Lwch Gwyn. These were enormous birds that would soar across the Welsh skies, larger than any flying bird today similar to the more well-known mythological hybrid, the griffin. These birds belonged to a knight of King Arthur's court, Dridwas ap Truffen, given to him by his wife, who happened to be a fairy. The magical Adachloch Gwyn could understand human speech and were his to command as he pleased. One day, Dridwas and Arthur had a contest, and Dridwas ordered his birds to kill the first person they saw entering the battlefield. Unfortunately for Dridwas, Arthur was late in arriving. Dridwas got there first, and the birds, loyal to a fault, flew down and tore him to shreds. The words Adar Chloch Gwyn persevered into the late medieval period when they were used in Welsh poetry to describe all kinds of raptors, and even men considered brave by the poet. There is little else written about Adar Chloch Gwyn, a Welsh mythological wonder lost to the centuries. Number 3. Known in Welsh as Cad Gothe, the Battle of the Trees is a medieval poem from 14th century Wales, from an ancient manuscript. It speaks of a story in which the heroic magician Gwydion of legend provides critical help in a battle at a fortress known as Caer Vevenir. The poem goes on to describe this monstrous creature as a black sprawling toad with a hundred claws on it, a snake speckled, crested. The warlord of Britain was waging war against this nameless enemy, so the enchanter Gwydion assisted by animating the trees of the forest to fight by his side. When the trees were enchanted, in the expectation of not being trees, the trees uttered their voices from strings of harmony and the disputes ceased. 
These lumbering creatures took up weapon and fought hard with descriptions of all of the types of tree included in the poem. The alder trees, the head of the line, formed the van. The willows and quicken trees came late to the army. The cherry tree was provoked. The birch, notwithstanding his high mind, was late before he was arrayed, not because of his cowardice, but on account of his greatness. It goes on like that for dozens of lines with such vivid and wonderful personifications of these natural warriors. The poem then becomes a bit obscure with allegory and metaphor, which have a wide range of different interpretations, but the wonderful image of all of the trees of Wales uprooting and joining battle is something of epic proportions, long before Tolkien's story involving Ents came about. Number 2. The Puka is a creature belonging to wider Celtic folklore of Wales, but also of Cornwall, Ireland, and even the Channel Islands. Much like the well-known Leprechaun of Ireland, the Puka can be considered both to be a good and a bad spirit, though this is mostly down to how vague the surviving written references to the creature are. The Puka is a shapeshifter that can take a variety of different forms, like a horse, a goat, a cat, a dog, a hare, even a human with animal features like a tail, but whatever its form, it always has very dark fur. Whether good or bad, the puka loves mischief. Tales speak of the creature waiting for humans in remote places and offering them a ride on its back. It then takes them on a terrifying wild journey across the countryside before returning the shell-shocked person to the place they picked them up and abandoning them. While not exactly friendly, the puka isn't known to be dangerous. Farmer folklore says that on the first day of November, the puka will spit on all the wild fruits that remain on their bushes or trees. In doing so, it renders those fruits inedible and unsafe to eat. Children were sometimes told this about eating overripe blackberries by their parents, who wanted to keep them from being poisoned. The name puka is thought to come from an old Norse word, puk, which means nature spirit. That's a fitting origin for this animalistic, shape-shifting creature of legend. Number 1. A 12th century native folktale included in the same mythological Mabinogion is that of Hlyth and Hlyvelis. The King of Britain, Hlyth, has a brother, Hlyvelis, who is a king of France. King Hlyth's realm is being menaced by members of a demonic race called the Coroniaid, known for their formidable ability to hear any word the wind touches. There's also a wide-reaching, dreadful scream that plagues Hlyth's people every year on May Day, causing all pregnant women across the land to miscarry. And as if that's not enough, Hlyth's storehouses full of food are being emptied mysteriously, no matter how many provisions the king replenishes them with. Hlyth, at his wit's end, visits his brother Hlyvelis in France to seek his advice on these three problems. The cunning Hlyvelis whips up a plan. He cleverly speaks to Hlyth through a brass horn, which prevents the demonic Koraniaid from hearing anything, and Hlyth returns home to Britain. First, the king arranges a meeting with the Koraniaid, and throws a potion made of crushed insects over them, destroying every last one of the creatures. Next up, Hlyvelis told him that the deadly scream each May must come from a red dragon warring with a foreign white dragon. Hlyth traps them in Oxford, puts them to sleep with vast quantities of mead, then buries them deep underground in North Wales. Finally, the king confronts the food thief, a magician who has been casting sleeping spells on the storehouse guards every night to steal the food. Hlyth keeps himself awake by splashing in cold water. The mighty magician admits defeat, and swears loyalty to Hlyth from then on as his servant. So this mysterious tale has a bit of everything, and I couldn't create a feature on Welsh mythology without including a dragon somewhere, could I? That's it from all top fives. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and subscribe and click the bell to stay informed. Or you can click there to support all top fives on Patreon and see the new videos before anyone else with my gratitude. Peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All Top Fives.